If you're new to intermittent fasting or a complete beginner to intermittent fasting, you're probably wondering just like how to start. <laughs> how do you pick your window? How do you know when to eat? What should you really be avoiding during your fasting period? It can be a lot to take in at first. So today I'm going to be sharing seven super easy tips to start intermittent fasting so that you can achieve your weight loss and wellness goals in today's video. All right guys, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. On my channel, I'm typically talking about the science-backed and holistic methods that you can use in order to achieve your wellness dreams. So if you have a wellness goal in mind, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so so let's jump straight into this first tip. And the first one is that you don't need to use a 12 to eight eating window. I know that's a very common, very popular eating window of starting your eating window at 12 p.m. and ending at 8 p.m. But that does not mean that you need to have that eating window. And I know that's a really common belief that a lot of people think that you need to have this as your eating window. Otherwise, you're just not doing intermittent fasting, which that really couldn't be further from the truth. There's two really important things to consider when you're going to pick your eating window. And the first is to make sure that it actually fits your schedule. I personally am like asleep by 8 p.m. So that wouldn't make sense for me to have my eating window from 12 to eight. Typically my eating window is around 10.30 to 6.30 because I'm a grandma and I go to sleep early. But if you typically eat dinner with your family at like 7.30 and you know you won't be done until 8.30, then it makes sense for you to have an eating window of like 12.30 to 8.30. Your eating window really should fit your lifestyle. Otherwise, it's just simply not going to work. And the second really important thing to consider when choosing your window is the circadian rhythm, which basically just means fitting your eating window into a night and day type of situation. There have been some studies that have found that there's more success when you're actually eating during the daylight hours. It just matches our body's natural circadian rhythm a little bit better. So if you have that flexibility with your schedule to eat your dinner a little bit earlier, so you're not eating right before bed, and that's something really important to consider as well. Okay, the second tip, more fasting isn't necessarily better. And the problem I have with going directly to like a 20 hour fast is that it's really difficult to get enough protein for your needs with one to two meals. If you guys aren't new to my channel, you know that I talk a lot about the importance of eating until satiated, especially in order to achieve a weight loss goal and to just feel good. It doesn't feel good to be hungry, but protein is one of the most important nutrients when it comes to feeling satiated or satisfied or not hungry. So in order to prevent hunger during that fasting period, it's really important that you are getting enough protein. Not to mention, it's really important to get enough protein so that your body doesn't start to pull protein from your muscles. And especially if weight loss is your goal, you don't want to be pulling that weight from your muscles. You want to be directing it toward body fat. But since protein is so satiating and so filling, it can be pretty difficult to get enough protein for your needs to prevent that with just one to two meals during your window. It's not impossible. I do know some people who are successful with it, but I have seen, generally speaking, it's a little bit easier to split that between three meals, which if you're curious on how you can calculate your own protein needs. I have a video that you can check out right here with the details. Okay, tip number three, drink water and maybe use a little bit of salt. Especially important to make sure that you're drinking enough water during your fasting period. Because one of the main studied perks of intermittent fasting is that you're not eating during that fasting period. So you're not going to be secreting the storing hormone insulin, which is great, especially when it comes to achieving a weight loss goal. It allows your body to naturally turn on fat burning mechanisms. But something that's been pretty well known about insulin is that it also causes water retention. So due to this fact that insulin is just lower in general because you're not eating as frequently, Frequently, it can also cause just increased water release. So it's really important to make sure that you're compensating for that by making sure that you are drinking enough water, especially during your fasted state. And it is highly possible that you also need to up your electrolytes too. So for this reason, this is something I talk with my AM peeps all the time about making sure that you incorporate a high quality Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt that you incorporate into your water during your fasted period, especially if you're exercising. I mean, this is pretty commonplace practice already. If like you're an endurance runner and you're adding those electrolytes in with the salt tablets, but because of that increased water release when you are in a fasted state because insulin is lower, it's important to make sure that you're replenishing both the water and the electrolytes. Okay, number four, break your fast with high quality protein, fat, and fiber. So we already talked about the importance of protein with satiety and making sure that you're full and satisfied and that your body isn't pulling that protein from your muscles instead. But fat is also hugely important for making sure that you're satiated and to help stabilize your blood glucose levels. Fat actually triggers the satiety hormone cholecystokinin or CCK, whereas protein triggers the satiety hormone PEPFYY. So these two combined really allow your body to turn on that hormonal aspect of satiety and make it so that you can have those extended extended periods of not having to eat, but still not feeling hungry. Fiber also acts on the stretch mechanism within your stomach that also tells your brain that you're full and satisfied. So this combo really works well together to make sure that you're not feeling hungry all day and make sure that your blood glucose levels are really stable. And as a result, it can also decrease sugar cravings too. This is something huge I see all the time with A and peeps that their sugar cravings 
just drastically decrease when they are actually eating until fully satiated with this protein, fat, and fiber approach. Because sugar cravings are really going to spike that storing hormone insulin. So especially if weight loss is one of your goals, you definitely wanna make sure that you're not having this uphill battle by having to fight these sugar cravings. And in fact, I created a free download for you guys of seven free intermittent fasting recipes that follow this protein, fat, and fiber approach. I'll have that link down in the description below so that you guys can check that out, download it, and get started on your intermittent fasting journey. Okay, number five, check your supplements. Most supplements are going to be fine fasted because most supplements aren't really going to contain any of the carbohydrates or protein that can break a fast. But there are certain types of supplements that definitely will. So if you're used to using like gummy supplements, like gummy apple cider vinegar supplements or gummy, I don't know, like a multivitamin supplement, these will contain sugar, usually around three to six grams per serving. So if you are using gummy vitamins, you might wanna look at using the capsule forms instead that aren't going to contain the sugar. This can even happen with some powdered versions of supplements where you stir it into a drink. So just check the nutrition facts label, see if it contains any added sugars. There's also some supplements that are just better with food. And this is usually because it can cause you to feel a little queasy if you're not eating it with food. Common one is like vitamin C or something that contains fat soluble vitamins, something like vitamin D, where it's just going to be better absorbed when it's eaten along something like fat where it can easily transfer it into the body. But on your supplements, it'll say the best way to utilize it. So it'll say taken with food or it can take in with or without food. So you can just check the label for whatever supplements you're using to see how it's directed to be used also checking to see if it has any sugar or proteins within it. And when it comes to medications, it's really important that you are checking with your doctor to see if you need to be adjusting your medications while using intermittent fasting. There are some medications that you need to be taking at certain times of the day or definitely with food or with certain types of food. So it's important to check how you need to adjust, if at all, any of the medications you're taking while using intermittent fasting too. Okay, number six, start slow with the exercise. So there's actually a really interesting study that pointed out that with intermittent fasting, it's actually going to be pretty much solely using fat as an energy source and therefore more of the weight loss is coming from fat itself. And with intermittent fasting, you're essentially relearning how to utilize fat as fuel. Because if you're used to eating every couple of hours, your body is likely running on the blood glucose roller coaster, where it's focused more on carbohydrate burning because it's an easier, faster source to use. Whereas if you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal or have steady energy levels, it's important to shift the focus over to utilizing fat as fuel because it's a much more sustainable energy source. And it's important for our body to remember how to use both carbohydrates as fuel and fat because there's reasons why you'd use either of these. For example, if you're doing like a sprint exercise and you definitely are going to be utilizing more of the carbohydrates for that fast burst of energy. Whereas for most other activities, you're going to be utilizing fat as fuel. So you wanna make sure that you're able to easily switch back and forth. And for most people, if you're used to eating every couple of hours or if you're used to eating a really high carb or high sugar diet, you're probably more used to using just the carbohydrates as a source of energy. And for this reason, depending on how frequently you're used to eating or how high of a carb or sugar diet you're used to having, you might feel a little lower energy within the first one to two weeks of using intermittent fasting as your body essentially relearns how to utilize fat as fuel. This is why I typically recommend utilizing lower intensity exercises is during that first transition period. So lower intensity exercises like walking or light swimming, light jogging, yoga, all of those are going to be just easier on your body and not drain your energy levels while your body is learning to switch back and forth between these two energy sources. And I do have another video where I break down the details of intermittent fasting and exercise for beginners. You can check that out right here. Okay, number seven, adjust your window if necessary. This is particularly applicable to social occasions. So if you're going out to dinner or there's a celebration, maybe you're used to ending your window at 7 p.m. But the dinner reservation doesn't even start until 8 p.m. That's a big conundrum, especially for a beginner to intermittent fasting. You're probably thinking, okay, well, do I just eat right before and then I just don't participate in eating then? I just have water. There are some advocates for that, but what I'd recommend, especially for longevity, is using window shifting because it's not like these celebrations happen every single day and it's important culturally to still be able to enjoy those. Otherwise, you're just going to feel restricted and isolated. And that's just not a fun experience, but it's also not really sustainable. So it's where utilizing a technique of window flexibility or shifting your window on a day when maybe you know that you aren't going to be eating until later in the evening, that's a really good strategy to just have in your toolbox so that you can make intermittent fasting more applicable to the long term. So for example, going back to that 7 p.m. end time, that means that normally you probably would start eating at 11. But if you know that your dinner reservation isn't until 
8 and you probably won't be done eating until like 9 30 you can simply shift your window for that day by a couple of hours and start a couple of hours later and then you can just shift back the next day and using apple cider vinegar is also a really great tool especially paired with intermittent fasting so if you're curious on how you can use apple cider vinegar with intermittent fasting i highly recommend you check out this video next also if you're new to my channel and you love the science-backed information on how you can achieve your wellness dreams make sure you subscribe right here come out with new videos every tuesday and thursday all right guys thanks so much for tuning in welcome to intermittent fasting and i'll see you guys in my next video